Hi, everybody. Welcome into Sports Talk Chicago. My name's John Zaglul. Great to have you here. And on 59.3 B-Pod TV and Roku, big show for today. We preview the Bears-Packers game coming up this weekend at Lambeau Field. And hint, it should be a loss, but we'll talk about it in just a moment. Before we get started, make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram at John Z Sports and on Facebook at John Zaglul. If you want to watch more of this show, search up Sports Talk Chicago on YouTube or go to sportstalkchicago.com. If you want to watch other shows on the BPOD TV network, search up BPOD TV on YouTube. I want to start today with this. Ever feel defeated? Ever feel like nothing's going your way? There's no chance anything will get better. Bears fans feel that way. It's been a long time coming. You could point to blips in the radar. 2018, 2010, 2006, early 2000s. But the fact of the matter is, they're defeated. They're apathetic. They don't care. Saw a couple of polls on Twitter. People asked, how do you feel after the Cardinals lost? Not really anger or sadness. Apathy. Nobody cares. People are catching up. Nobody cares. This reminds me way too much of the end of Mark Crespin. Same thing. Players on the IR for no reason. No fans showing up. Bad team. Bad record. Crespin fired. John Fox comes in. Same result. Up and change. I feel defeated. I do. Everyone's shouted. Everyone's had their opinion be heard. Everyone's talked about in detail the problems with this team. And yet, as we sit here right now, no changes in sight. We hear rumors. Hey, it's at Nagy's last game, which is a joke. Hey, Ryan Pace is out the door. Hey, Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace could both be gone. Maybe one of them will go. We hear rumors. It excites us. But no change happens. Why is that? Remember last year, too? Rumor. Constant rumor. Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace are fired after this season. No, Mitch Krabinski was. Chuck Pagano was. Right, it was the defense's fault the team didn't win last year. Sean Desai hasn't fared much better. It's been about the same, really, defensive production. Why? Same roster. Aging roster, too. But I just find it funny. We all clamor for change. We point out inconsistencies. Point out the problems with the team. What needs to go? Who needs to stay? It's the same result every time. Nobody listens, and the team sucks. Now we sit at a point of the season where they're 4-8, and eight, going to face the Packers on the road this weekend. What am I supposed to say to you? I know you come here for analysis and opinions and hard-hitting takes, but really, what am I supposed to tell you? There's a chance to win? Now some people say on Twitter, well, If Justin Fields does win it, because he'll be back, that'll be the win of the year. Sure. But do you think it's going to happen? There's a difference between putting up these false scenarios and them actually having a chance of happening, even a slim chance. There is no chance here. (laughs) And I'd love it if it happened. I'd be so happy for Fields, seriously. He was gone all year, no O-line, not great play, bad coach. It'd be nice to end the year on a note like that. Start to end the year like that. I'd love to see it happen. Does anybody actually believe that's possible? Yep, you're a rational Bears fan. You know that's not going to happen. You're facing Aaron Rodgers again, who's having like an MVP season. Facing the division leader. You guys can't win at 4-8. 
And even though last time was a 10-point game, it was Green Bay all the way. It was a dominant showing. The score doesn't really show how the game went. That was at home, too. This is primetime football. Fields and Broncos. I love Justin Fields. I think he can still be a good quarterback, but you know what? Leads the league in fumbles. Second lowest passer rating in the NFL. Do you really think he's going to march into Lambeau with this Bears team, with this supporting cast and this coach, and pull off some sort of unbelievable upset? Get over yourself. You could float it as a possibility all that you want, but the fact is it's not going to happen. This is going to be a real tough loss for Bears fans to swallow. But then again, what did I say to start? Apathy. Who cares? I've lost feeling for this team, for their losses. That should be scary. The Bears management, the front office. People are losing feeling for their team. They're choosing to do something else. Talked to Tom Perducci this week. Talked about baseball's lockout. And he said, there are so many entertainment options out there. Baseball being locked out, even during the offseason, is going to make them lose fans. And lose coverage. In the moment, people will go somewhere else. No baseball content? Okay. I'll go to basketball. I'll go to football. Or I'll go do something else that has nothing to do with sports. There are so many options out there. So in management, the front office here, Bears fans are starting not to care. That should be a big red alarm. That should be a problem. Everybody has a choice. Everybody has options. You don't like the team? You don't like what's happening? You could leave. And people are losing feeling about a team like this with such a storied history. Charter member, founding franchise, Walter Payton, Super Bowl. NFL championships back in the 30s, 40s, 50s. When it's 2021 and you're losing feel and you don't care about a team like this, that is a red flag. That's a problem. You know what makes it worse? Again, people are expecting a loss, like last week. Nobody expected the Bears to win. They didn't. This weekend, Bears-Packers, big rivalry. Nobody expects them to win. That's a problem. What are they, the Jaguars? Texans? Have we gotten to a point where we just know it's going to be a loss? That's what you are. Are the Jaguars or the Texans? Yep, that's your attitude about them. So throw the Bears into the mix. At 4 and 8. And they've still got Minnesota twice. Seattle, the Giants. Maybe they'll win a couple of those games. Maybe 6 and 11, like I said, to start the year. What does that mean? I don't know if anyone remembers, but at the beginning of the year, Everybody said, not just me, these were experts, people on the team, coaches. This is about Justin Fields' development. And analysts said, it didn't matter really what the record was. Did Justin Fields develop? You tell me that today. Has Justin Fields developed? And that's not a knock on him. It's a knock on team around him, coaching staff. Has he developed properly? Have they done everything in their power to make sure he'd be a good quarterback? Well, leads the league in fumbles, second worst passer rate. Knows the worst? Zach Wilson. Chats. But what do you think? Think the Bears have done everything they could to develop him? No. That, to me, signifies already and it should signify what the pain is for Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace. We were told. Doesn't matter about the record. Doesn't matter about how they play. 
did Justin Fields develop? Right now, as of today, no. He's been worse off. What does that mean? It's time to make a change. When I see reports that, oh, Ryan Pace might stay in Nagy will go, what's the point? They both suck. You know, Ryan Pace is the one who gave Justin Fields a crappy old line. Why is he not responsible? Phew. See, people forget about this stuff. Many of you have probably forgotten the true point of this season. It is development. The whole argument was they could stay. Nagy and Pitch could save their jobs if Justin Fields does good. The numbers tell a completely different story. That should mean by default they should both be canned immediately. There's nothing more to prove or to show. Matt Nagy does better with Andy Dalton, which I don't know if that's sabotage. I don't know what it is, but it's the truth. Andy Dalton had four picks anyway. You know, people have to be held responsible for their actions. That's not just a football thing, a Bears thing. That's a life lesson. You make a mistake, there's going to be consequences. That's just how it works. Every decision you make. Positive or negative, there are going to be consequences, good or bad. More importantly, the last time I checked, we live in a meritocracy. What does that mean? Well, if I do good at my job, I get promoted. I get a raise. I get rewarded. If I don't, I'm fired. There are very few people in the world who do bad at their jobs and keep them. Like, very few. That's not usually a thing. Why does it work, though, with the Bears? Why does it work for years with the Bulls? It did, too. Our packs. Jim Boylan, Fred Hoiberg. I don't get it. Why is everyone okay with just mediocre? I'm not even saying fans. I'm saying management. Fans have called for the end of Nagy and Pace for a couple of years. Not a fan thing. Everyone sees it. It's a management thing. They don't want to do it for whatever reason. And even think about this. As of today, ownership truly believes Matt Nagy and Brian Pace give them the best chance to win. Think about that. And even after last year, Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace give us the best chance to win. That's what they said by keeping them around. Signaling. I mean, think about what kind of a slap in the face that is. That's what they believe. That's what they actually think. Oh, yeah, they're good enough to win. There's no one better. There's no one better. Nobody. Just had Cole right on. You'll hear it in a second. Cole Wright said Daniel Jeremiah or Lewis Riddick to be the GM. Signed by me. Somebody different. You can't say there's nobody better. And Brian Pace has been given so much leeway. Been through nine different quarterbacks. Nine different quarterbacks. Nine different ones have started a game under Ryan Pace. Look at Matt Nagy. 2018, first year, great year. And ever since then, it's been 500 or worse. That shouldn't be acceptable. Something needs to give here for this team, for their fans, for their players, for Justin Fields even. You're not going to do it for the fans, and you say you don't care about your fans. Fine. What about Justin Fields? Another young rookie quarterback. Putting up these horrible numbers. 
Don't you want to give him something to protect him? Maybe a new old line, maybe a couple of weapons, something. That way he doesn't keep putting up 69 passer rating and nine fumbles because you don't protect him. How about that? I'm just appalled at how this is all playing out. Not the Bears of all teams. The Bears are settling for mediocrity. They're okay with this. They're okay with Brian Pace and Matt Nagy. They're okay with the direction of the organization. They're okay with being a lapping stock in the NFL. They're okay with being expected to lose in games against decent teams. Arizona, Green Bay. Wouldn't that sound an alarm? Shouldn't that be a cause for concern? Apparently to the Bears, it isn't. And until they see the problem, nothing's going to change. Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace will be here for 10 years. Doesn't matter. Until the Bears acknowledge there's a problem, until they see, well, our quarterback isn't being developed properly. And that's why we have this head coach and this GM. So they see and make that connection, nothing's going to change. As far as this weekend goes, don't get your hopes up, please. Don't say Justin Fields could win, it'll be the win of the year. Don't. Don't even give yourself that idea. We know what's going to happen. We know how it's going to go. It's going to be herring and fleecing from Aaron Rodgers. It's going to be a joke of a game in prime time. It's going to be embarrassing. The only thing you could hope for at this point is that maybe it's so embarrassing that it seals up Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace's faith as part of the Bears. Thanks for watching today's show here on BPON TV, channel 59.3 in Broke. We really appreciate the time. Before we finish up, make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram at John Z Sports and on Facebook at John Zaglul. Remember, if you want to watch more shows, search up Sports Talk Chicago on YouTube or go to sportstalkchicago.com. Thanks for watching again this week here on BPOD TV. New week coming next week. New shows, new guests, and all of your favorite Bears coverage. We'll make sure to be on it. Thank you so much for watching. So long, everyone.